Blessings in Jesus, friends. Hallelujah, and welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of First Enoch, and we are going to be in chapter 90 today. Now, in chapter 89, we saw that there was much figurative language in this vision that Enoch is seeing that reveals much of the end of days and the history of men upon earth so far. And we're going to continue that vision. Keep in mind that, again, much of this imagery defines what we have seen taking place in history up until this point. So as we read these events, you must think of the things that the people of Israel have been through, their captivity under different empires, the defeat of the judges, the defeat of these evil kings that were persistent throughout the Old Testament, and then you have these monarchs and empires who come against the people of Israel all the way up until the time of Jesus. And so that's what we're going to read about a little bit this morning. Chapter 90, verse 1. And I saw till that in this manner 35 shepherds, these would be the kings of Judah and Israel, undertook the pasturing of the sheep. And they severely completed their periods as did the first. And others received them into their hands to pasture them for their period, each shepherd in his own period or in his own time. And after that, I saw in my vision all the birds of heaven coming, the eagles, the vultures, the kites, the ravens. But the eagles led all the birds and they began to devour those sheep. Now the sheep would be the people of Israel most likely these eagles, these birds, these vultures, these ravens would be foreign outside nations that are attacking the people of Israel and trying to take them as captives. It says they came to pick out their eyes and to devour their flesh, to make slaves of them. And the sheep cried out because their flesh was being devoured by the birds. And as for me, I looked and lamented in my sleep over that shepherd who pastured the sheep. Now, I can't speculate who this shepherd was, but he was a prophet of God and he was working on behalf of the people of Israel. It goes on in verse 4 and says, I saw until those sheep were devoured by the dogs and eagles and kites, and they left neither flesh nor skin nor sinew remaining on them till only their bones stood there. And their bones too fell to the earth and the sheep became few. And I saw until that 23 had undertaken the pasturing and completed in their several periods 58 times. These 23 would be the kings of Babylon over certain periods of time. But then in verse 6, he says, Behold, lambs, these are the prophets of God, were born by those white sheep. And they began to open their eyes and to see. And what did they see? They saw the truth. They saw that the people had drifted into the ways and the practices of the pagan nations, and they saw the truth to the point that they wanted to tell the people they needed to repent and come back to the ways of God. And so they began to cry to the sheep. They began to prophesy the word of the Lord. Verse 7, yea, they cried to them, but they did not hearken to what they said to them. But they were exceedingly deaf, and their eyes were very exceedingly blinded. And I saw in the vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs and took one of those lambs and dashed the sheep in pieces and devoured them. And I saw till horns grew upon those lambs and the ravens cast down their horns. And I saw till there sprouted a great horn of one of those sheep and their eyes were opened. Again, this would be one of the great leaders of the people of Israel during the Old Testament times. And it looked at them, and their eyes opened, and it cried to the sheep. And the rams saw it, and all ran to it. And notwithstanding all this, those eagles and vultures and ravens and kites still kept tearing the sheep and swooping down upon them and devouring them. Still, the sheep remained silent, but the rams lamented and cried out. So the sheep would be the common people of Israel. The lambs would be the leaders of Israel, these godly spokesmen and prophets of Israel. And they cried out to the Lord. Verse 12, those ravens fought and battled with it 
and sought to lay low its horn, but they had no power over it. And I saw till the shepherds and eagles and those vultures and kites came and they cried to the ravens that they should break the horn of that ram. And they battled and fought with it. And it battled with them and cried that its help might come. And I saw till that man who wrote down the names of the shepherds and carried up into the presence of the Lord of the sheep came and helped it and showed it everything. He had come down for the help of that ram. I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them in wrath and all who saw him fled and they all fell into his shadow from before his face. All the eagles and vultures and ravens and kites, they were gathered together and there came with them all the sheep of the field. Yea, they all came together and helped each other to break that horn of the ram. And I saw that man who wrote the book according to the command of the Lord till he opened that book concerning the destruction which those twelve last shepherds had wrought and showed that they had destroyed much more than their predecessors before the Lord of the sheep. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them and took in his hand the staff of his wrath. And he smote the earth, and the earth clave asunder, and all the beasts and all the birds of the heaven fell from among those sheep. And they were swallowed up in the earth, and the earth covered them. And I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep, and the sheep proceeded against all the beasts of the field to slay them. And all the beasts and the birds of the heaven fled before their face. And I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, and the Lord of the sheep sat himself there on that throne, and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. And the Lord called those men, the seven first white ones, and commanded that they should bring before him, beginning with the first star which led the way, all the stars whose privy members were like those of horses, and they brought them all before the Lord." And he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds to whom I delivered the sheep, and who, taking them on their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. And behold, they were all bound. I saw, and they all stood before him. And the judgment was held first over the stars. These would most likely be those fallen angels. And they were judged and found guilty and went to the place of condemnation, and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming and full of pillars of fire. And those 70 shepherds, these would be the leaders over the people of Israel who were wicked and evil in God's sight. It says those 70 shepherds were judged and found guilty, and they were cast into that fiery abyss. And I saw at that time how a like abyss was open in the midst of the earth full of fire. And they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss. Remember when Jesus said the blind will lead the blind? Well, even though the, the blind have been led by the blind, the blind are supposed to think for themselves. We're not supposed to merely do what men tell us to do. We're to go to higher counsel, and that would be the word of God. And it says they were all judged and found guilty and cast into the fiery abyss, and they burned. Now, this abyss was to the right of that house or maybe possibly the first tabernacle or temple. And I saw those sheep burning and their bones burning. And I stood up to see till they folded up that old house and carried off all the pillars and all the beams and ornaments of the house were at the same time folded up with it. And they carried it off and laid it in a place in the south of the land. This would seem to be the destruction of the first temple. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep brought a new house or a second temple and set it up in the place of the first which had been folded up. All its pillars were new, and its ornaments were new, and larger than those of the first. The old one which he had taken away, and all the sheep were in it. And I saw all the sheep which had been left, and all the beasts on the earth, and all the birds of the heaven, falling down and doing homage to those sheep, and making petition to, and obeying them in everything." And thereafter, those three who were clothed in white and had seized me by my hand, who had taken me up before, and the hand of that ram also seizing hold of me, they took me up and set me down in the midst of those sheep before the judgment took place. And those sheep were all white, and their wool was abundant and clean. 
and all that had been destroyed and dispersed and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the heaven assembled in that house. And the Lord of the sheep rejoiced with great joy because they were all good and had returned to his house. And I saw till they laid down that sword, which had been given to the sheep, and they brought it back into the house, and it was sealed before the presence of the Lord, and all the sheep were invited into that house, but it held them not. And the eyes of them all were opened, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them that did not see. Now Paul kind of speaks to this in Romans chapter 11, in verse 25 and 26, when he says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits, and blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So all Israel shall be saved. Well, what does Enoch say? Enoch says the eyes of them all were opened, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them that did not see. And so back to Paul in verse 26, all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the Deliverer, which would be Jesus, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, or the house of Israel. Enoch continues in verse 36 and says, I saw that house was large and broad and very full, and I saw that a white bull was born with large horns, and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air feared him and made petition to him all the time. And I saw till all their generations were transformed. And they all became white bulls. And the first among them, which would be Jesus, became a lamb. And that lamb became a great animal and had great black horns on its head. And the Lord of the sheep rejoiced over this lamb and over all the oxen. And I slept in their midst, and I awoke and saw everything. This is the vision which I saw while I slept. And I awoke and blessed the Lord of righteousness and gave him glory. Then I wept with a great weeping, and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it. When I saw, they flowed on account of what I had seen. For everything shall come and be fulfilled, and all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me. On that night I remembered the first dream, and because of it I wept and was troubled, because I had seen that vision." Now that brings us to the end of chapter 90, but basically at the end of verse 41 here, he says, for everything shall come and be fulfilled and all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me. And so basically what he is saying is I have seen the history of man before it even happens. And so when you go back or if you go back and you listen to this again, or you read chapter 90 again, allow the imagery to represent the history of man thus far. All the great battles, all the great wars, all the great defeats, all the destruction, all the bloodshed that has taken place among the people of Israel to remain a nation, a people of God, and all those who have come against Israel to try to attack and defeat her. If you keep that in mind, much of what you read in these visions will make much more sense. Well, on that note, we'll end, friends. I'm so thankful that you're continuing with us in this study. If you have any insight or input that you would like to relay, please do so in the comment boxes below. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.